Hi, welcome to this video which is the first of a five part series in which we look at the technology advancement in the field of solar energy over the past 10 years. This will give you an idea of what technology we have at hand but also what we can expect in the future. Each video will cover a particular area of solar energy technology. The topics are PV that is covered in this video, part 2 will be on inverters, part 3 on batteries, part 4 on orientation and integration tech and part 5 will be on solar thermal. So without further ado, let's look at how solar PV technology has progressed over the last decade. This will help you understand what technology is obsolete and what is forthcoming. During the last decade, solar PV panels have evolved significantly. Over that time, polycrystalline panels have overtaken monocrystalline to become the dominant technology in the market. They jumped from around 30% market share in 2010 to now 60% share in 2020. The price of PV in that period has gone down precipitously from $2 per watt to just $0.32 cents per watt. PV panels are being manufactured all around the world, although China is still producing more than 50% of the panels in the market. The efficiency of the panels over time has improved consistently at the rate of 0.5% per year for both mono and polycrystalline. 10 years ago, panels with power rating of 80 to 120 watts were the most commonly found. Today, a single solar panel with a power rating of 400 watts can be purchased. The technology has slid towards larger panels because it allows for more competitive pricing and more efficient generation per unit area. Overall, the performance has improved not only because of cell efficiency enhancement, but also with better internal electrical connections. One of the problems that has been highlighted over the last decade is the potential induced degradation or PID in solar panels that can result in power loss of up to 30%. Let's explain PID or potential induced degradation. As the panels have become larger, their internal voltage has increased. This has led to an increase in the voltage difference of the panels with respect to the ground and resulted in harmful stray currents. The latest panels are addressing this problem by taking into account the creepage and clearance. They are improving the lamination process and are better at isolating the panel from the frame. Note that older panels that may not have been designed to higher isolating standards can be aided by the installation of an NTPID device. Another technology that has surfaced over the last decade is the cut cell technology. As the name suggests, this means that the PV cells are cut in half. This has multiple advantages such as the lowering of resistive currents, improvement of cell power, higher stress resistance, lower hotspot temperatures and decreased opportunity for cell cracking. The manufacturer REC was a pioneer of this technology but it has since caught on. 2014 marked the arrival of PERC technology in photovoltaics that has gone mainstream in six years. PERC stands for Passivated Emitter Rear Cell or Rear Contact. It is the addition of another dielectric layer at the back of the solar cell as a result, it reflects previously unabsorbed light back into the cell for a second chance to convert it into electricity. With PERC, 23% cell efficiencies have been recorded. Biofacial solar cells that are capable of absorbing sunlight from both sides and produce electricity have been around since the 60s. However, the arrival of PERC technology opened up the opportunity for biofacial solar panels to be developed at a large scale. They are most suitable for use in solar farm and agrophotovoltaics. They can also act as a perfect energy collector for floating PVs. The bifacial gain, that is the additional output compared with the monofacial modules, can range from 5% to 20%. Solar cell size has also kept increasing to lower the production cost per unit power. From around 2010, suppliers began to move to 156 mm as the standard size and the older 125 mm wafers were more or less eliminated from the market by 2014. Wafer suppliers in China then adopted 156.75 mm as the standard and this became the M2 wafer format. 
According to the International Technology Roadmap for Photovoltaics, M2 represents more than 90% of the market for both mono and multicrystalline wafers in 2018. In 2019, manufacturers again began to diverge from this standard as they look to maximize the active space in the module to meet the industry's demand for consistently higher power ratings. Several major manufacturers have launched modules based on wafers measuring 158.75 mm, while a handful of high efficiency suppliers are working with the M4 format measuring 161.75 mm. And it doesn't stop there. In June, leading wafer supplier Longai Green Energy Technology launched its new M6 wafer measuring 166 mm. Lastly, the cell wafer thickness is also going down. To date, the silicon wafer thickness has more or less remained at 180 micron. Any more thinning has resulted in cracking. But now, through a special diamond cutting wire, the thickness can be reduced, resulting in material saving. The cost impact is estimated to be 1.5 cents per watt for every 10 microns of wafer thickness. An issue that has come to the surface in recent years is with regards to the polyamide back sheet in the panels. This layer of plastic at the back is witnessing cracking due to weathering, even in panels that are only 6 years old. To counter this problem, TPT films are being used by Tier 1 PV manufacturers which cost more. The TPT is the short form of three sandwich layers that is Tudlar film, PET and Tudlar film. This sandwich layer is UV resistant and also resistant to humidity and vapor penetration. So just to recap this video, if you're thinking of buying panels today, then to get the most value for your money, you should look at larger panels with cut cell technology and with higher dielectric strength rating to avoid any leakage of currents. And ask for solar panel certifications like the UL certification or IEC certifications mentioned below. Panels that are made by tier 1 suppliers may feel costly at the beginning, but in the long run they will help you avoid many potential problems. And with this the video is concluded. Make sure to like the video if you learned something from it. Subscribe to the channel for great upcoming content. Thank you for your attention.